What about Vietnam? A podcast with Gary Newsom. The series where Gary talks with travelers about their experiences and adventures. Find out more about Vietnam from the people who have actually been there. What about Vietnam? Whether it's adventure, exploring the culture and cuisine, shopping, or just soaking up the sun. Let Carrie and her travellers pave the way for a magical holiday in Vietnam. What about Vietnam? Xin chào and welcome to What About Vietnam? When I was deciding just how I would do justice to my guest uh, on the show today, Lavon Bossman, uh, it was kind of hard until I looked at her photographs and her photographs depict Hanoi street life. And they are the most amazing pieces of art because they show so much detail. I hope you welcome her to the program. She comes to Vietnam obviously through uh, the lens of her camera, inspired by friends that were already in Vietnam who were boasting about the scenery, people and places to explore. It's crazy how this happens, but when you've been to Vietnam, it's very easy to leave with aspirations that you want to come back and you're always sharing with people and telling people just how great it is. So I can understand how she was inspired through her friends. Lavon is uh, South African born. As a photographic artist, she offers up the most insightful and, as she calls it, photographic art depicting disappearing worlds. And I think that's just a fabulous way to describe her art. She landed in Hanoi in 2019, and while teaching English since her arrival, she's been expanding her portfolio with the street culture of the city. Personally, I really love street culture. And in cities like Hanoi, when the old and the new coexist, sometimes just sitting having a coffee and people watching can tell you a lot. You will hear from Lavon how she loves to delve into some of the more interesting parts of the old quarter. So she's got some great insights into special treats to watch out for. And like even traveling late at night, just her confidence as a solo traveler, I'm sure will help people who are thinking about coming to Vietnam, possibly as such. If you are interested in hearing different viewpoints of Hanoi and one from a seasoned traveler with an eye on culture diversity, this episode will mean something to you. You will be able to view and ultimately purchase Lavon's work, as I've made sure I have included all the links to her in the episode notes. Please welcome Lavon to the show. Hello, Lavon. Welcome to the What About Vietnam podcast. Thank you, Gary. Nice to be here. That's good. Now I'm talking to you in Hanoi in the middle of COVID and um, things are still a little bit tight there at the moment, I understand. Yeah, rather tight, I'd say. It's uh, it's (laughs) been quite a strange feeling so far. (laughs) It it literally feels like we've been in lockdown for months already and with no end in sight. I mean, they they give us a, a date and it just gets extended every time. At least we know where still far from the situation that's in Saigon. So we're still okay. Exactly. Yes. And while that's not much comfort, it is some comfort. Mm. I just want to um, uh, give my listeners, I guess, a little bit of background on you. You are a keen travel photographer and Uh uh, I've seen your African portraits. They Uh are just amazing. Thank you. And you've done a little bit of you know, trolling around the world, uh, the Swiss Alps, uh, I read. And I think you, from what I see, you do definitely have that fascination with developing countries and the (laughs) diversity of street life. And I'm really glad, I'm really glad you've got that because I think street life is also fascinating. So tell us what drew you to Vietnam in the first instance. Why Vietnam? 
Um, yeah, so so as a photographer, um, like we just said, I I love the diversity of life. I love the contrast of seeing the ancient, traditional kind of life that might be at risk of disappearing because of rapid development. Um, so that's probably my main attraction to Vietnam, apart from uh, my first introduction to it as a child when I when I saw this American series tour of duty about the, the American soldiers in Vietnam and I saw a little bit of the the country lifestyle, the uh, bamboo huts on stilts, that kind of thing. Um, and also I saw pictures of Saigon that really, really fascinated me, the, all the, the traffic, all the crazy chaotic traffic, all the different characters on different types of transport and you just – Wow, it just looks amazing. So uh, visually, I was very attracted to Vietnam, and I find it yeah very interesting. Um, yeah, it's a it's a thing, you know. From so- South Africa, there's also a bit of this element of the the first world and the third world that exist side by side, and that kind of thing is what you see in Vietnam, especially Hanoi. I don't, I haven't been to Saigon, but in Hanoi, that exists as well. Yes, definitely. And uh, you're right, that I think is an attractive feature in the sense that I kind of like the fact that it still holds some of its traditional aspects, as in the people, the food, the the street food, and and just the street antics, I call them. Like you'll you'll be wandering (laughs) down a street and you'll go, Oh my goodness, you know, how am I going to explain that to the people back home? Because, you know, we're so urbanized where we come from that, yeah, um, yeah it's a little bit hard. And they go, Oh, are you joking? Do they do that just for the tourists? And you go, <laughs> uh, No, that's actually, they do that every single day. That's their routine. Right, right. I often, I often stumble upon a street sometimes very early in the morning, unexpectedly, uh, where I feel like I just walked into an old movie set and I just went at some totally untouristy place where people are living their absolute daily lives. And, uh, wow, I love that. <laughs> all the smoke going in the air and all the, uh, like a pig or, or something that is just lying over a bike half slaughtered and <laughs> yes exactly street and market I mean, scenes and i don't know whether you've been to train street which is a, a main street in hanoi uh, yes one and, of my favorites <laughs> yes and i i had a very delicate uh day there where uh i i was desperate to get this video and to get this photo <laughs> and of course you would know what that's like and i kind of leant over and my girlfriend was with me and uh, she was kind of very nervous about that I wouldn't get out of the way because it's very close, isn't it? It's dangerous. <laughs> it's very dangerous. And, now, and I'm not sure they did shut it down for a while there. I don't yeah. know whether it's still shut. I hope. Yeah, I'm yeah, also I not hope sure. It is. We'll see after yeah. COVID what's, what's the deal there. What happens, yes. But you're right. On that same street, you know, there was a couple of chickens that were in a, a cage there was a little lady and she was kind of hunched uh, over and she was cooking something on a little gas stove. Right on and, the train you know, tracks. It was right <laughs> on the train tracks. Exactly. I know. And I guess for you as a photographer, that is street life in all its natural, isn't it? Yeah, I must say the day I first went to Train Street, I really felt like I was in a different country. I mean, even those chickens don't look like normal chickens. I think they call them dinosaur chickens. They just look so ancient. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I know. But everybody moves their bikes out of the road. They collapse their chairs from the side. They close their windows. I think it goes through at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I think it's twice a day that it actually goes through. So you have to kind of be there on time. Yeah, they're yeah, very yeah. quick and efficient. When the train is on they the way, within three minutes, everything's packed up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that's just kind of one street kind of scene, isn't it, Hanoi? Yeah. That's and there's lots, lots more. Talk, talk to me a little bit, maybe about some favorite areas of yours. 
because I know you're walking around and you're trying to find, you know, some, I don't know, just moments that you could capture because obviously they come and go so quickly. Yeah. But do you have some favourite places that you kind of seek out? Uh, okay, well, the Old Quarter in general is a favourite place. Uh, you can't go wrong if, you, if you're a tourist, for example, and you don't have a lot of time and you just spend time in the Old Quarter, you will be amused for days. <laughs> And Train Street is also part of Old Quarter, so you'll find that there. And, of course, Hanoi is famous for having all these interesting streets where they sell all all of the same products in one street. Uh, like, yeah, like one of those streets is the, the, the Bamboo Street that is just so beautiful to me. You just see all these bamboo products, mostly some things like ladders and just long bamboo poles of different thickness. And it, it just creates quite a nice decoration. And uh, usually the, the old quarter has quite a lot of trees. So there's a, always this green shade atmosphere that I really love about it. And of course, so much happening. I mean, it's so bustling. You Your eyes spin when you are there for the first time. Um, so much to see all the different traffic that goes by people on bikes, carrying the strangers loads that you just can't believe they can actually balance that. Um, so yeah, the old quarter is great. And of course, all the food that you can find there, uh, can also entertain you for days. And Mm -hmm. then um, some other parts that I love the, the plant street in Wang Watam street, that's not far from the old quarter. But it's also it's something that I discovered quite a lot later. I didn't somehow didn't know it was there. And I thought I walked into heaven the day I started walking down that street. That was just amazing. This long, long street, so many different shops selling plants, and there are uh there's also they sell fish and there's birds in little cages, and it just feels a bit like a plant in a zoo street, kind of a menagerie. Yeah, <laughs> mm. I think I, I think I might have stumbled into that street. But you're right; it is a fascinating, and they do have birds and yeah, in that you area. Just spend hours just walking down the street and just be like, "Wow, it's just yes. it's so beautiful and so yeah, so abundant." And yeah, of course. Okay, one of my other favorite places would be the flower market in in Teho, the Kwangba Flower Market which I did my one little photo project at night, late at night, about, well, it was about 3 a.m. Um, wow, that is a light if, project. Yeah, if you want to experience something a bit different, of course, it's still overstimulation in a way, but so incredible that time of night, especially if you happen to be there uh, before the new lunar month, because then it's extra bustling. And it feels like you're in a really crazy action movie, just hooting and shouting and organizing and bikes and trucks, everything moving. And then you just walk around there and you just see everyone doing their job, this whole community working together. It's quite serious. Like I wouldn't go there in a big tourist group at all. Just if you are alone, that would be the best because you might get in the way and maybe get run over by something. But (laughs) (laughs) the local people might just push you out of the way to save your life a few times. Um, <laughs> but that is, yeah, that, that's been one of my favorite experiences. Just when I think of, of all the, the sights and sounds and even the smell of the flowers and the smell, there's this coffee smell, everything just so beautiful and seeing the people working so hard all through the night and everyone, everyone is on a mission. Everyone is just, uh, they have something to do and people, everyone. Yeah. I just love that. The, you can see that people are serious, but they also there's a lot of smiles in between, and everyone is close together because it's very narrow. So and yeah, you're right. It is it is a a feast for the senses, isn't it? Like you've Absolutely. got all of those those beautiful smells, uh, and mixed in with coffee, and then you've got tight squeezes with motorbikes <laughs> intermingling with people, <laughs> but all the color. I think the color. A lot of color. Isn't I, I mean, when I think of Vietnam and I try to describe it to people why I come home so uplifted, it's because I think there's just so much colour. Right. And 
I think it fills your senses and I guess from, you know, your point of view with a, a photographic eye, you looking at the mixture of colours, you know, some of the work that I've seen and your, your beautiful little postcard book that you do, uh, which, by the way, people, I'm going to put the link uh, in the episode notes too because uh, Lavon's work is beautiful in this. Probably You probably need the big printable version that you can put on your wall because I agree with her that there's a lot in Anyway, I, <laughs> I, I think it's important we kind of get the message to our listeners today about that colour sense that comes into a visit and the smells. I mean, not all smells are fabulous, but... No, not all of them. <laughs> and, you know, there's going to be the odd That's rubbish awesome. that you're going to see and, you know, yeah. all of this kind of thing. But if you can kind of lift yourself above that... Right, exactly. You need to you need to just focus on the beautiful things and ignore the stinky things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and just take in the ambience. I know even from the... From the old quarter, it's lovely to walk around the lake also in the afternoon and you'll see people doing Tai Chi and yeah. dancing and, yeah. like, where do you see that in a city? Right, Up yeah, in- there's, that, there's that park um, at the south of the lake. I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of one of the main parks. If you go in there, also you see the groups of people doing exercise and the I mean, the trees that are there, also ancient and so beautiful. It's amazing in the city. And and uh, and once again, there's certain traditions and there's certain uh, connectivity with people. Families come together, groups come together that, you know, do it regularly and they meet there. Some of the older generation will come and sit and play games together or, you know, sit on a park bench. You'll see some old guys that, you know, sit there and maybe, you know, smoke or, or something like that. But there's, there's kind of a, it's a scene. It is, you said before, you could almost put it in a movie, couldn't you, just as it is. Yeah, there's a lot of it that that just looks like it's a movie right there. Who scripted this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Whoever exactly. did the costume design did it did an excellent Perfectly. job. Perfectly. <laughs> and that beautiful lady with her little pajama set kind of thing on with a hat and that like she's just as charming. Exactly. Now I want to I want to kind of talk to you about the craziness side of the traffic and, you know, a lot of people talk to me and say, oh, you know, I I think it would be just too much for me and, (laughs) you know, like we spoke about it, didn't we, the other day and maybe (laughs) maybe speak to my listeners about how you coped when you first came. Yeah, I was quite nervous about that before I arrived because I watched some videos just to learn how to cross the street. (laughs) And I thought, wow, am I really going to do that? And I I don't know. It's not that bad. I, I don't know if it's worse since I've gone. Um, but in Hanoi, maybe I adapted it, to that somehow quite quickly. I think I have a I, – I actually like that kind of thing where you must just realize don't go against anything. Just go with the flow. It's absolutely – if you go with the flow, don't hesitate. Don't make any sudden movements. And everything really works out. <laughs> it does. And I think uh, going with the flow is a really great analogy. I mean, I, I've i had Vietnamese kind of seen me when I first used to travel and they think, oh, gosh, you know, I, she's typically uh, a tourist and is struggling. So they'll just grab my arm and, you know, help me across the street. Yeah. And then I got a bit smarter and I have a, a beautiful girlfriend who's Vietnamese um, and when we go travelling together around Vietnam, she'll say, now, Kerry, we're going to such and such now. It's a very wide street. You know the drill? <laughs> Grab my arm, we just go. And I went, gotcha, I'm with you. <laughs> and, yeah. you, you know, you pick your points and obviously you can find some method in the chaos. It is a bit or- like organised chaos. They don't want to crash into you yeah. as much as you don't want to crash into them. Exactly, exactly. And there are some some tricks that you can follow, especially 
especially if you're on a bike, walking can be a little bit different. You just kind of walk. Uh, but when you're on a bike and there are actually cars and trucks coming, because sometimes it feels like the bikes watch, watch out for each other, but you got to watch out for the cars. They just kind of go. Yeah. So, But something that you can do when you don't feel safe or, or you don't feel confident that it's your turn and you can just keep on moving is to kind of shelter behind someone else, maybe a bigger vehicle or sometimes there's a little group. It always feels to me like I'm part of a motorbike gang when I'm in the traffic, which is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can kind That's of say, okay, the group is starting to move and then you just make sure you're sort of behind them. So if someone does crash into the group, you'll be right behind, so you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> that's a great way of getting across a scary street. Absolutely. And as you say, as you're riding the bike, you're in a, a different group. But I know from riding with other friends, etc., they're most fearful of cars because the yeah. car is obviously faster, quicker, and can really you know, do some damage. So yeah, they that, they're the ones. Yeah, they so much. <laughs> exactly. And the bikes are traditionally only going at about 40 k's an hour. Right. You know, sometimes much less. Yes, mm. exactly. Yeah. And mo- so, most of the time I prefer going on by bicycle, which is very relaxing. <laughs> also, yeah, well, also then you can take the smaller roads. You don't need to stick on the big roads. Just go and explore the little roads on the side. Exactly get you exactly. to the same destination absolutely and some of those skinny areas uh where it is a little bit clutterish a bicycle works much better doesn't it yeah i mean you'll yeah. see all these old people on bicycles and they don't look worried <laughs> <laughs> yes that's always a good sign <laughs> all right i'm gonna jump into uh, a story you told me about you've made a friend, I think, in the neighbourhood. Maybe you want to uh, share yeah. that with us. Yeah, that's quite a special story and a special friend, I guess. Uh, yes, yeah, so I met this this elderly gentleman when I first moved to the neighbourhood where I'm living now. He He just looked really interesting to me photographically I just wanted to take a photograph of him immediately which I did um he reminded me a bit of Mr Miyagi from the Karate Kid story he has oh, this beautiful uh, this great beard and this long gray hair and just a very friendly face and uh so yeah he so he allowed me to take his portrait and I think I think he even bought me a, a Nukumiya that day which is one of the sugarcane juice which is one of my favorite drinks in Vietnam and since then, we've bumped into each other many times. Uh, very often I'll be cycling past or walking past and he'll be sitting somewhere on the sidewalk eating or having a drink and he'll always invite me over and I always join him if I, if I have time. Um, I think there was one morning at about 7 o'clock I came back from cycling around the lake and he, he invited me for a shot of rice wine at about 7 o'clock oh, in wow. the morning. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he doesn't speak any English, and I'm quite embarrassed at my own level of Vietnamese. So Same. in the beginning, we we were communicating a bit with Google Translate, but it doesn't always work that well. So we gave that up eventually, and nowadays mostly we just hang out together, just have a drink, eat some peanuts uh, on the little plastic chairs wherever, somewhere on the sidewalk. And after a while, yeah, it'll be time to go. Sometimes oh, I think that's sweet. Yeah, so sweet. I mean, sometimes if I if I've walked, he will he will just point to his bike and then say, then he will offer me a lift home. <laughs> oh. oh, that's delightful! And how gracious of him to you know befriend you when he really can't understand everything right um, that you're saying. Right, and, and he's always treating me to somewhere other. Chada or Nugamia or something. All right. <laughs> Have you tried Bi Hoi yet? Uh, yes, yes. I quite enjoy that beer. Actually, um, I don't go to the beer hoys that often, but my one of my favorite places where I have this kind of beer is at the flower market. So, so they have this one food stall that seems to stay open all night. 
where they serve this quite famous uh, fur chin, the, the crispy fried noodle, which may be my favorite food in Vietnam. And mm. so I like going past there because it's all, it's kind of on, on the way to my home when I take the back streets from sort of another more central area. So it happens that I go past there late at night and then I'll have some of that and a nice cheap beer. <laughs> it's very cheap beer. <laughs> There's a uh, yeah, good view of the flower market to entertain me. It's lovely. <laughs> when you first arrived, Levon, did you do any tours or anything or did you just take up exploring on your own? Did you? Yeah, I didn't really do any tours. I was lucky enough to have, have a friend here who'd been living here for a few years, so he showed me around quite a lot. Uh, yeah, I was very spoiled then because I could just hop on the back of his bike, no no stress from my side, and just do a bit of sightseeing. And Yeah, he would go and show me around the lake or show me little all his favorite little places. And we even did a, a trip, a trip during the, the Tet holiday, the New Year's, um, for about a week where we traveled a little bit north to Mai Cha and Pulong and the Dar River and a few places like that, which was which has been my most incredible bike trip so far. Yeah, and that was great to be with people who knew the area, who could also speak some Vietnamese. And yes. yeah, that was in particular very in those special. regions. Yes. You're a solo traveler per se. I mean, yeah, most have of you the felt time. safe? Uh, yeah, when I travel, I, I I do mostly feel safe. I think. Also coming from South Africa, I definitely feel more safe here. Um, I, I was quite nervous of traveling by bike by myself. Maybe sometimes I still am because maybe my bike isn't the best. I've got the little Honda Super Cup that, that's not that fast. It could perhaps break down. But usually the people are very helpful and kind. So if you would break down somewhere, someone would come along and help you sooner or later. Um, I would advise people to be a bit street smart, though, because it has happened to me when I took a bus somewhere and the the drivers actually made me put my bag into their storage underneath the, the bus. And I just had a funny feeling about it. So I got out and went around and they were scratching in my bag, uh, nearly stealing my passport, which stupidly I left in my bag. <laughs> so right. yeah, you've got to watch out for things like that. You got to you got to be a bit street smart. Yes, absolutely. And I think mostly common sense prevails in most yeah. cases. Yeah, uh, like most you're countries. Right, but like most countries, absolutely. <laughs> so, would you recommend Hanoi as a as a good starting point into Vietnam? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think from I mean Hanoi itself I mean, I've been living here for two and a half years now, and I still find new places that I'm so excited about. Wow, more new discoveries. And from Hanoi, there are so many places around here that's not even far that you can go to. Uh, there's, for example, Sok San is a place we, we often go to a group of friends, just take our bikes and go there for the day and relax by the lake. There are other beautiful places like well, you can go to Katba Island. I haven't gone there by bike, but you can take a bus and then you go on a ferry and spend a weekend there or whatever. Places like Bavi, which is incredibly beautiful. All these, you just go up this mountain and see all this amazing plant growth and beautiful waterfalls. And it's really incredible. And some other places like that, that's, that's really not too far. And of course, you can from it's 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 north, but it's uh it's kind of central from a lot of places to travel to. Absolutely, and now with the freeway to Halong Bay, um, that's now reduced to only two hours away. So you've got you know that to access or or Lanhart Bay mm -hmm. as um, the two areas now. I mean, you're right; it's kind of the leapfrog to I what I would call open spaces, uh, massive landscape, really idyllic kind of areas for a photographer, especially, you know, on a landscape kind of canvas 
headset. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I know I uh, I kind of like the idea of using Hanoi as a base. You and I talked about that before, about, you know, basing yourself in Hanoi and doing some trips, a short trip to Nin Bin per, per se. Yeah. You can do that easily in, easily. well, not easily in a day. I mean, it's about three that or four hours to get over. there. Yes, yes, I, yeah. I would too. But w- what I'm saying is, you know, access-wise to so many different places, you know, yeah. north and south. Even taking a flight to Da Nang, going to Hoi An, it's not that far. No, no, and cheap, and cheap. Yeah, and Hoi An is lovely. <laughs> yes, yes, it's my. that's where I base myself. So... If you were going to give any tips for first-time travellers, now that you're <laughs> very familiar with uh, being in Hanoi, what would you what would you give us uh, some tips for for people? Um, okay, I, I find that a little bit of a hard question to answer, just because yeah, first-time travellers, I think everything is just overwhelming in the beginning. Um, and and it depends on how much time you have to spend a lot of what you're going to do. But I would say, I mean, I think if people come to Hanoi and it's their first time, they will probably be so overwhelmed that they just stay in the old quarter, which is absolutely fine. But I would say, yeah, don't be afraid to explore some, some non-touristy areas where more like local neighborhoods where – you really see even more of the daily life, um, which can be really magical and beautiful. Just there are so many street markets everywhere. And that to me, that is that is my main impression of Hanoi is, is the street markets. And I love it. And I, I love the I love the idea that it looks like anyone can start a little business on the sidewalk. Um, <laughs> so I would say, yeah. Go, go and just walk around and get lost somewhere and find the little unexpected roads. Um, and also don't be, don't be afraid to use the, the Grab Bike service. It's really convenient. And yes, it's very good. Yes. Yeah, you can just absolutely relax and enjoy the view and, and have this little adventure of going through the traffic with someone who knows what they're doing. Yes, <laughs> yes. And even the Grab cars are good. Yeah, the Grab cars are much cheaper than you would expect. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, and also I highly also, recommend them. Yeah, also just be open to hanging out with some with the local people. They can be really welcoming. Like I remember this one day, I was walking down the street, and there were this was this group of construction workers having their lunch on the sidewalk, and I just walked past them and smiled at them or something, and they they waved me over and made me join them for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> would was, be typical. Yeah. yeah, I just ate with them and then they had to pack up and go and continue their work. <laughs> Things like that happen all the time and those to me are the most precious moments. Absolutely. Lavon, it's been great having you on the program. I really loved your stories and Thank I'm sure people are going to love your photographs as uh, you keep Uh, adding to your portfolio. So I'm sure my listeners are going to be uh, keen to have a look at that as it grows. So once again, to everyone, the uh, links to Lavon's photography, everything will be in the episode notes. Stay well, Lavon, and I look forward to uh, talking with you again soon. Thanks so much, Kerry. Thanks for the opportunity. It was great talking to you. Thank you for listening. Check out the episode notes for more information. What about Vietnam? Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review and stay tuned for more fun adventures in Vietnam. What about Vietnam?